On August 23rd, the summer event Ahsoka arrives on Disney+. Plus. Witness the thrilling adventure of former Jedi Knight Ahsoka Tano as she uncovers a disturbing new threat to the galaxy far, far away. Don't miss the two-episode premiere event of the highly anticipated Star Wars series Ahsoka, streaming August 23rd, only on Disney+. Plus. Hi, I'm Marcus, and I support Gen X Grown Up through Patreon. You can too by visiting patreon.com slash genxgrownup. Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel, website, and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listener to episode 62 of the Gen X mm. Grown Up Podcast. I am John. Joining me as always, my friends and co-hosts, George. Hey, how's it going, guys? And Mo. Hey, everybody. In this episode, we'll evaluate a crowdfunded sci-fi fantasy film, check out a piece of arcade game tech made to hang on the wall, and play a hilarious rhyme-writing party robot game. <laughs> Whatever the hell that could be. <laughs> that's easy to say. Like, that's a thing. <laughs> right? I wrote it and can't read it. <laughs> We're almost to the end of the year here, and we've been running this fourth quarter, fourth listener drive. Just a couple more episodes before it's done. If you're not familiar, you haven't heard, we're trying to kind of rally the troops to get some new listeners and ears to the show. And what we're saying is recruit somebody, tell them to email us that you recruited them, and whoever recruits the most folks are going to get to pick their very own backtrack topic in the new year. But there's more. There is more. And recently we added some swag to it. So not only do we get to pick a backtrack, you will get a Gen X Grown Up t-shirt of your very own size and color your preference you know we have three or four people in the running but the holidays are here and upon us everybody's taking some time off perfect podcast listening time take advantage of this time you're with friends and family you don't see all the time recruit those guys and tell them (laughs) hold on if they're people you don't see all the time friends and family you probably don't like them very much so they're probably not going to recruit these people to listen to our podcast well maybe it's it's like punishment you're like hey (laughs) check this out yeah why don't you get addicted to this show <laughs> or maybe you could just sort of bring them together we have a common ground to talk about come together around the gen x grown-up podcast that's over right. the so now where we are the world we bring Is families we together are? we're all holding hands you can't see that <laughs> yes <laughs> but yeah and it's great podcast listening time so you know turn some folks on to it while they're traveling say hey listen to these nutty dudes they talk about tech and toys and media and backtrack stuff and we'd love for you to be the winner so you recruit somebody have them email us at podcast at gen x grownup.com we'll get you on the leaderboard nice speaking of emailing us we have Uh-oh. a fourth listener email hey that's your favorite part it is my favorite part of the show <laughs> <laughs> this time it is from stew monkey stew monkey you remember recently found us he became a patron and he's been listening to the back catalog topic is gen x predictions you guys remember that backtrack mm, mm-hmm. uh, maybe <laughs> How long ago was that? It, it's been a while. I mean, he's yeah. really, he's digging through he's digging the back catalog. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I love okay. that. Stu Monkey says, just listen to the backtrack on Gen X predictions. We had our second child last year, Gen Xer, 42 years old. Yeah, let's have another baby with a 13 year <laughs> age gap. <laughs> that sounds like great planning, Stu. Uh, so, so anyway, I pondered the thought the year he was born, 2018, his baseline for one year are drones, cars that parallel park themselves, some that drive themselves, Alexa, Hey Google, Roomba Suite smartphones, facial recognition, etc. I can't <laughs> fathom what he'll see in his lifetime. I'm amazed enough what we've experienced in our 40 plus years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. I mean, I, like I remember microwaves when they first came out. <laughs> Brand like, new. I don't have to pop popcorn on the stove anymore and shake yeah. the pan all around and everything. <laughs> That's all it was good for really was like, you know, popcorn. Well, microwaves and, and burning food are the two. Yeah. <laughs> turn yeah. it to a rock. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. It's, and I'd forgotten that backtrack. I had to look it up as the one where like, remember a kid wrote in, uh, their predictions and they found it and like read it years later. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was that one. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was suggested by a fourth listener, as I recall. Stu goes on to say, I'm still working my way back to current in the podcast archive. I think I'm up to episode 32. I'm listening Man. new ones as they come out. Y'all are doing an incredible job, Stu. Wow, he's halfway caught up. That's crazy. <laughs> he, he has a lot to look forward to. That's that's one way to put it. I that's, agree. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm looking at this optimistically. Stu Monkey, we sure appreciate you yeah. writing in. We love that you're going through the catalog and 
you're finding stuff you enjoy. If you'd like your email read here on the show, hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com. And before we get into the meat of the show, I have to say there's one more iTunes review that just hit us. Ooh. I love reading these. Another Ooh. iTunes review? Yeah. Man, people are gluttons for punishment. That's crazy. <laughs> right? So this is iTunes review from War Eagle 1999. Oh, no. He's an Auburn fan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> is that what that is? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah War Eagle. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Yeah, all right. But at least he's writing us a review, so I'll cut him some slack. He did, and it's a five star review with a subject okay. Do oh, you right. like to have fun? Yes. <laughs> oh, rhetorical, sorry. If you grew up in the 70s and 80s and like to have fun, this podcast is for you. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and this is easily the best I have heard. Wow. Wow. Whew. You don't listen to enough podcasts, War Who Eagle. Sent <laughs> some money. <laughs> Quiet. Somebody paid him. John, John, let him live in his family fantasy world don't <laughs> don't dissuade him he, he goes on to say i discovered it last summer when trying to find youtube videos on the southern fried gaming expo nice mm -hmm. i'm cheap and even i decided to become a patreon member <laughs> so start downloading now so these guys will keep doing the show side note showbiz was definitely better oh. than chuck e cheese rock God, a fire till i really? die <laughs> come on it's funny what how like of all the things we've talked about in this show that seems to be the biggest like that's a debate, debate. that will not do go away right <laughs> And thankfully, all the listeners are coming down on my side of the fence here. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, yeah. <laughs> You got, you got nothing. You got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> War Eagle 1999, we sure appreciate you leaving us an iTunes review. If you haven't yet, you're listening, we would love if you would head over to iTunes or wherever you listen, leave us a review. It really helps other people find us. We're seeing the fruits of your labor. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, thanks. With that, let's jump into the meat of the show right after this. Now, it's here. The excitement. The adventure of a new force at breakfast. We'll call them C-3PO's. New c 3 C-3PO cereal from Kellogg's. Now you can experience the taste of Kellogg's C-3PO. A crunchy new force at breakfast. May the force be with you. Yeah, let's kick things off talking about media that we've been consuming. Could be TV, music, movies, whatever it could be. And uh, I will get the ball rolling by saying that I stole what Mo was looking forward to last time we spoke. <laughs> We're yeah. both just stealing from Mo every time. Either I get him on, on the card before you he does, or you steal something of his. Poor Mo. I know. He has all the best ideas. It's, 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 it's the highest <laughs> form of flattery. But Mo, you were looking forward to the second or third, depending on how you look at it, Jumanji film. Yeah. Jumanji, the next level. I plan to go. Stupid work got in the way. It got in the way. Yeah, that's right. You, you had a ticket. You were sitting right next to me, and then you could not show up. No. So, But I went, and I let the popcorn sit in your seat if that helps at all. So. Oh, I feel better. Yeah, I felt it. <laughs> I feel much better. Yeah. That's one benefit of the A-list, right? Somebody can get the seat next to you and then just not go so you have more room to spread out. Right. Just call a friend. Can you, can you grab E3 so I have to right. relax? I need to be able to relax. So I did go check out Jumanji the next level. This is The Rock and Jack Black mm -hmm. and going back into the Jumanji video game. I, I won't bury the lead here. I will tell you that it was okay. It was exactly like, I think I was describing to you, Mo, when you said, oh, I didn't get to go. What was it like? And I said, imagine if you watched the first one and it just went on two more hours. It was just as good. You usually, a, like a sequel, you ramp it up and things get bigger and more bombastic. And this felt just like a flat line. It was the exact same movie again, almost like they didn't have a new or exciting or over the top idea. It was just you more think? of the same. I mean, it's Jumanji. How many ideas can you have for getting sucked into a game world and having to participate? Bait. It's the same idea every time. It's just, well, this time we're going to throw Danny Glover and a couple other old people in there so that we'll see if The Rock and <laughs> Kevin can emulate their behaviors. That's all it was. And the casting was really the only new thing. You're right. And so now, Mo, you're going to want to see this, but only because you liked the first Jumanji video game. What I keep mixing them up. Is it first or second? Let's call the Robin Williams Jumanji first, the other OG. Jumanji second. OG. <laughs> OG. Yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> if you like the first Jack Black, you know, The Rock, yeah. Kevin Hart, Jumanji, you will like this one. But if you're going in and saying, yeah, I want this more bigger, you're not going to get more bigger. And in fact, <laughs> you mentioned, George, So one of the guys they had in the cast was Danny DeVito. Right. And Dwayne Johnson had to kind of like do an impression of him throughout the film. And it was pretty cringy. <laughs> <laughs> you reached the maximum range I mean, of this talent. Don't get me wrong. I love Dwayne Johnson. I think he's a fine actor. I think he knows his lane and he sticks to it most of the time. But really, he's going to doing an impression of doing Danny an impression DeVito of Danny is not DeVito? in his lane. No. It's not there. 
<laughs> so yeah, you know, I I would have to give this like a three tokens out of five. It's fine. Okay, you're not going to be awful. mad. I mean, just saw that's, it. That's really what I was yeah. kind of expecting to be honest. You know. So on the A list scale, what would it be on that? Um, it's a five dollar Tuesday. Yeah, okay. I mean, you'll have All a right. good time, but just contain your enthusiasm and going. I can't wait for the bigger, better. It's not bigger, better. It's exactly more of the same. If you like, if you like the second one, you're gonna like this third one. I think so. Yeah. So Mo, don't don't not see it. You're still gonna want to see it. I won't not see it. And George, you weren't <laughs> enthusiastic about it in the first place. So new. No, I will save that hour and a half of my life and stay home. Thank you. <laughs> That's I'll for you. That's else. probably the case. Yeah, fair enough. So, George, since you don't want to go see Jumanji, tell us what you have been watching immediately. Well, I actually did get to go see a movie uh, around about the same time you went and saw Jumanji. I went and saw Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Oh, right. We've talked about this very briefly a mm-hmm. little bit. Yeah, yeah. So it got a very smattering of a theatrical release. Like it was like in one city here for like five shows and another city there for like right. ten shows. That kind of a thing. Like a t- Tiny little tour thing or yeah, very limited release. Very much like that. Somehow ended up here in my hometown. I have no idea how, but I've been looking forward to it for the last couple of months because it came out a couple of months ago. I just could never get a ticket for it because mm-hmm. it wasn't here. Then it showed up one day. I'm like, I'm going to go see this. I don't care what it is. I knew nothing about it other than it was Jay and Silent Bob, which there was a Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back film yeah. mm-hmm. a number of years ago that was really funny. So this is Jay and Silent Bob reboot, which takes that script from several years ago of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, and they reboot it. <laughs> thing, okay, hence the name. The okay. whole topic of the film is explaining the difference between things like a reboot and what's the other thing when they redo a film? Remake or? A remake, yeah. Explaining the difference between a reboot and a remake. Like one has to do with putting younger actors in who are funnier and blah, blah, blah. But the thing that was really awesome about this was the sheer absurdity amount of cameos in this film. He I, has I had heard reference to that. Every single human being you can think of that's an A-list <laughs> Hollywood actor is in this film in one part or another. I mean, it's just <sighs> ridiculous. It's Only crazy. Kevin Smith has that ability yeah, exactly. to, to get all those people. And he does put his daughter. His daughter's one of the main characters oh, yeah. in it, which is really funny. However, the character she plays is actually as Jay's illegitimate daughter from the Jay and Silent, <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back film. Because, of course, what are Jay and Silent Bob always trying to do? They're trying to get to motherfucking Hollywood to stop a motherfucking film about their lives from being made. And that's exactly what they're doing here. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Kevin Smith plays not only Silent Bob, but he also plays Kevin Smith, which is... A speaking role. <laughs> Odd to see what? on the screen. Really? Yeah. So, <laughs> so it, like, the, this movie doesn't acknowledge that he's he plays Silent Bob. He's just two right. different characters. He's two oh. different characters. Yeah, Silent Bob is his own entity, and then there's Kevin Smith, who that shitty director that keeps remaking a whole bunch of <laughs> shitty films. <laughs> <laughs> he plays like a self-deprecating version of himself, it Exactly. Like. I mean, and they get everybody in this thing. It's really fun. Now, George, you are, you know, all, disclosing the truth here, you are a huge Kevin Smith fan already oh, in the yeah. whole View Askew universe. Yes. Was this awesome to you, do you think, because of your already investiture in the, his universe and his oh, filmmaking? Completely. Is it just fan service or is it good for anybody? No, it's only fan service. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody, if you're not a Kevin Smith fan, if you haven't watched all the films, this is not the movie for you. Don't go see this film. Don't waste oh, your really? money on it. You okay. won't enjoy it. It is completely fan service. Matter of fact, there's even a scene at the end of the film where or apparently they must have been running a contest to get people who are fans of Kevin Smith in the film. Mm-hmm. And so at the very end of the movie, there's a scene just for those people. And Kevin Smith is sitting with him. He's like, they're not going to cut this shit. We're getting this in the film. <laughs> so <laughs> it's strictly fan service. It's nothing more than that. It's, it's a funny take on reboots and remakes. Yeah, And I, I enjoyed it only because of that. But if you're not a Kevin Smith fan, this is not the film for you. All right. So knowing that, what would you give it as a rating? Well, well, with my hugely rose-colored glasses on, <laughs> I would give this one full price because I okay. love Kevin Smith films. This is a really good version. He even makes fun of his other horrible films like um, the cop movie with Bruce Willis or the Walrus movie where you mm-hmm. know the guy gets turned. He right, makes right, fun right. of Tusk. those films. <laughs> yeah. Tusk, yeah, Tusk. <laughs> so he, he understands how silly some of his stuff is and how – he really needs to appreciate the fans who support him. He understands that those fans are what's made his livelihood possible. Oh, sure. So for me, I don't mind paying the full price for it. If you're not a Kevin Smith fan, like I said, 
I wouldn't even waste an A-list ticket on it. <laughs> is it is those a full five tokens or? For me, four, probably four okay. and a quarter. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's a, really dug it. Very cool. All right. So let's turn to you, Mo. What have you been checking out? So I found this movie is called Code 8. You probably didn't hear of it, I'm sure, because hmm, nobody has. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it came out this year, believe it or not. Um, it turns out that this was a kick, uh, like an Indiegogo funded movie. That oh, was, all right. I've seen a all couple right. of those. Okay. Um, and right. it was, uh, they did a short back in 2016, like a 10 minute short to kind of promote their idea. They finally got enough money. They made the movie and they released it this year. And I guess it's just released a video. I don't think that it had much of a theatrical release. Okay. All right. It was a pretty decent movie, I thought, actually. They got some, a couple like fairly big name actors. Most of them are like, TV people, like the guy who plays the arrow is in it and a few other people. Oh, uh, Oh, uh, Stephen Amell. Uh, Amell. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's it. Yep, he's in it. The premise behind it is that 6% of the world have powers. Okay. Ooh, okay. And there's very distinctive powers. Like some people, you know, super strength and some people could do fire. You know, the usual gambit of stuff, right? Right. right. Superhero-y yeah. right. sort of thing. Okay. And, and then it kind of shows that like how during like the industrial age, they were key to like building cities and constructing everything. After a while, robots came in and basically replaced all the work they used to do. So they were okay. kind of relegated now to like second class citizens. Oh, uh, so the 6% with powers are the are the rich and famous and no, those the other way around. people. And- no, it's oh. the other way around. The people with the powers are the ones without money. They can't get jobs. Oh, what? really? Yeah, that's, they passed that's kind of a, Oh, the robots a replaced what the 6% right. people did. Right. Okay, exactly. oh, okay. I got confused. I thought, okay. Yeah, they replaced the 6%. And so basically, it's about this guy. He's trying to like... He has powers where he's trying to hide it and, you know, he's basically trying to, like, get money, that kind of usual stuff. But it wasn't a bad movie. Um, The ending was a little flat, but I thought overall, though, I was like, wow, for a movie that was made for a couple million dollars, I was very impressed with it. You know, special effects were really good. It's kind of a reverse take on so many of the others. This Mm -hmm. is the superheroes are the second class citizens. Right. They're the the downtrodden. That seems. Couldn't you just pretend you're not super? But I guess Um, not. You have to register. It's like one of these things. Like they had to register. Oh, you're registered. uh, Using your power. Powers against anybody is like a major crime. Mm-hmm. So even using, even if you justify, it, like if somebody shoves you and you say you're telekinetic and you shove them back with your power, that's an automatic felony. Oh, so they must have some way that they have learned how to overcome the normal people's deficiencies and be able to capture these people. I'm guessing because yes, they have. You know, if I've got telekinesis, oh. <laughs> yes, how are you going to stop? Me? <laughs> so yes, they have. They have these robot police that basically they use to go against them. They, they're constantly monitoring them. And a lot of it's like kind of similar stuff you hear. It's like it's a lot of fear involved with it, not trusting these people with powers because people may be a little jealous, that kind of thing. Sure. So it's, it wasn't a bad movie. Not not a bad it's movie. A different kind of take on that. Yeah, that same thing. So so you say not a bad. So go ahead and put your money where your mouth is. What kind of a rating? What are you going to give? Code well, for eight? tokens, I'd probably say three and a half. Okay. All right. Um, wow. Decent. I, th- I said I don't feel cheated that I watched it. I said that the end was a little flat for me, but overall, it's like you know this was actually a well acted, well done movie. Really cool special effects. The way they did the powers, I thought was really smart. And I guess with computers and CG these days, you could do a lot better special effects and lower budget than you used to be able to do. <laughs> Naturally, right? Yeah. And, and they take full advantage of it. So it's you know if I didn't know better, I would say it was a lot more expensive movie for sure. And plus the acting was really good. The story I thought was interesting. If it was in theaters, I would probably make it a you know five dollar Tuesday. Despite the fact that in some ways we're kind of experiencing superhero fatigue, they mm-hmm. still found something interesting to do with it. No, yeah, that's, and the fact that the pretty, powers are almost something. incidental in this one. Like, they, yeah, there's powers, but really that really wasn't the story. And they focused on the people, which right, exactly. is, we said, the exactly. storytelling and the people right. are what makes it good, yeah. Yeah, naturally. I just want to point out that we live in an age where we used to say that $2 million was a huge budget for a film, and now it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. that's I mean, just guys, crazy. I mean, they, they crowdfunded that. <laughs> that's that's a Kickstarter movie. <laughs> well, like, $2 million, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> like, Kevin Smith made Clerks for like $40,000 yeah. by maxing out a few credit cards. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, Spike here it is 20 years later. <laughs> exactly. 20 years later, like, it's, well, I've got a credit limit of a million dollars on this credit card. Let's go make a movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's <just> nuts. <laughs> Post Pebbles cereal, part of this nutritious breakfast. Now from Pebbles, you can get a Fred Brinstone flying disc. Or Barney. Or Dino. For fun with a twist, it's a Flintstone flying disc. What an especially marked box of Post Fruity or Cocoa Pebbles cereal. I'm telling you guys, this is a day of breaking records. 
I have another tech toy. <sighs> what the, the hell? hits just keep on coming. It's not very like nice. A thousand dollar one either. It's like man, reasonably I, priced. I quit. There's no point in me being on the show anymore. <laughs> I've got all the stuff I'm buttoned down. You, what the hell? Being a gentleman that I am, I'm gonna let you gentlemen go first, and then we'll take <laughs> someone <laughs> after. So let's start with <laughs> thank you, you, George. Sire. Yeah, thank you, thank you, George. What do you have for us, sir? Well, I do have something, but it actually affects all of us. John, you recently did a video on the YouTube channel about a new gaming front end platform all oh, right yeah, for pcs mm-hmm. yeah uh grand old games or good old games whatever their name is because i always get confused uh, it's their front end i it's the only way i can describe it it's called galaxy 2.0 they've had a galaxy yep. 1.0 i guess now they have 2.0 and you did this video on it where you oh here's how you get on it but at the time you did the first video it was in closed beta meaning if you right. didn't get an invite you couldn't download it but then yep. it yep. became an open beta right and you did another video showing five cool things and one of those things was so awesome that it made me go down the, the <laughs> galaxy 2.0 right away and start configuring it because as you know i've recently downloaded launchbox and big box and went for the lifetime subscription and everything because i want an easy to play uh front end for all my emulated games like the old arcade games atari 2600 mm-hmm. games that right kind of stuff. but this good old games galaxy 2.0 is even better than launch <laughs> Lunchbox or Big Box for me right now. Mm, really? I love this little thing. Yes. And that one that you showed where you can add your own specific games to it and you yeah. did the little batch file where you loaded a MAME game into it, just said, you know, MAME and the name of the file and boom, and it sure, popped up and right. loaded. I was like, man, that is so cool. And so I downloaded it, put all my platforms in it. Like I didn't even realize I had some of these platforms, like one game <laughs> Origin in here or something. And whatever, right. Yeah. yeah. It's so easy to play games. Although the very first game I tried to load was a grand old games purchase that I made a long time ago, Wing Commander Prophecy, and it wouldn't run. So I was like, okay, <laughs> your game should run. <laughs> If no other games run. <laughs> but that's not Galaxy's fault. That's 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 a good old game's fault. That's GOG. That's their problem. But yeah, right. the launcher, and y- you mentioned, I think you kind of glossed over, its actual function is to help you launch all of your games for all these different platforms. Mm-hmm. And we found some tricks where you can have it launch more things, like you said, the main game. So did you write some batch files so you could launch from? I, I wrote one just to test it out, and it worked perfect. Yep. It is so much easier because Launchbox Big Bucks, it wants to put different things in there and it wants you to it wants you to place your ROMs in certain folders and place the emulator in certain folders and stuff and it's it's a little complicated to set up now once you get all that stuff set up most of the games run pretty well I did find that sometimes I would go to load a game that I knew worked because I loaded in in MAME but Mm -hmm. then in big box it wouldn't load and it would just say oh these files are missing and it would just crap out Hmm. so when I ran the batch file that you showed how to do in that video game ran just perfect and I'm like well shit (laughs) You know, I guess I wasted 60 bucks, but that's okay. I mean, (laughs) this Galaxy 2.0 does everything I want. And we were talking offline about it. You said, well, but I don't know if I'd want to create all those little batch files and everything. Honestly, you have to do almost that much with LaunchBox. So Mm. even though LaunchBox downloads a bunch of images for you or videos or anything like that, this Galaxy 2.0 seems to do the same thing. So, man, I'm glad you're enjoying it. You know, I noted the only thing it doesn't do is it's not like a full screen screen kiosk mode right. kind of thing we mentioned yeah. right it's, it's still kind of a mouse driven right. deal right yeah but i still love it i mean it's i've rediscovered games i didn't even know that i had and just like you showed in that video i found oh shit i purchased that in two different systems well that yeah. sucks but okay <laughs> who knew now yeah. i've got it <laughs> i must have really liked it yeah they have a couple of licenses i'm really enjoying it it makes gameplay easy and that's really what these things should do they should that's make the point me mm-hmm. being able to play my games easier for me. absolutely you reduce the friction it's like look i know i've got them everywhere can you just give me one place where i see what i have and that's mm-hmm. the goal and i i think they're pretty well delivering on that i know like I, we were looking forward to this I, maybe a year ago and they started talking about it oh, yeah. and now it's been fun to play with yeah it's yeah, the way it's i'm still launching in games. beta so i can't imagine yeah. once they go full service and it's all out of beta and everything i think it's going to be great i'm keeping up with it for sure yeah, yeah. i'm glad you're enjoying it cool now john I'm playing that, but I know there's something that you're playing that you're not necessarily enjoying as much (laughs) because we have had a crazy amount of comments on the YouTube videos that you put out on this one thing. So why don't you tell everybody about it? Yeah. So George is talking about the Arcade 1UP Partycade. This is the company that makes those... You, I'm sure you've all been to Walmart and Target. We've talked about before that countercade that I spent too much money on and ordered. But these are the arcade machines. 
Gallagans, four foot stand up arcade machine, your Galligan, your Space Invaders and stuff. And they came out with another flavor of these kind of arcade machines. And this is one that really is a space saving kind of thing. And something you were talking about maybe doing yourself, George. Mm -hmm. The Partycade is actually renamed. uh, They first introduced it at electronic shows as the Wallcade, which is kind of a flat arcade machine that hangs either on your wall or over a door. And it was actually only available on the home shopping network. So I had to bite the bullet, (laughs) create an account at the home shopping network. It was exclusive for them. (laughs) No, I'm not watching the the, the show. I'm just ordering online. It was... $199, $199, again, 200 bucks for this, but it was a really cool form factor. It's it's Pac-Man themed, so it's got a Pac-Man marquee and Pac-Man artwork on the control pad, uh, and it has Pac-Man, Galaga, and Galaxian in it. So, I mean, three heavy hitters, great, mm-hmm. yeah. great games. Yeah, yeah. So, first, I loved the machine, and I even said in the video that it's a five-token review unless it does something to lose tokens, and the hits just kept coming. <laughs> <laughs> now, there were some minor build quality issues that I was able to fix, there was a button that was like literally not connected. There was a deck protector. It was all warped and bowed. And granted, I took points off for that, but that was something I was able to fix being a little technical. Anyone <laughs> else might have opened this for Christmas and went, it doesn't, it doesn't work, work, return right. it. And yeah, right. it was terrible. And we had commenters saying, just fix this, just fix this. I'm like, yeah, but I didn't pay $200 for a craft project. I ordered yeah, exactly. a product that's supposed to that's work. That's not the point. If I spend $200 on a monitor in three video games, $200. A monitor in three 1980s video games, (laughs) damn it, it better well work. That's some bullshit that you have to take. Yeah, that gets us into the real meat of it, which is they have put subpar electronics into this machine, worse than any of their others, running the same games they run other places. It cannot run them at correct speed. It runs them too slowly. There's no excuse for not being able to find a processor to run 1980s games. This is 2020. I know. (laughs) There is no reason. It's been 40 years. My freaking phone could run them. One of my favorite comments on the YouTube channel was, I could run Galaga on a paper plate. (laughs) <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> I've done more science and side-by-side comparisons in this video series with Galaga side-by-side. And, and you can see, and so we haven't spoke since uh, these came out directly, George. You are the Galaga fanatic. I want to know oh, yeah. the fact that this thing, what it does to Galaga. Am I exaggerating? Am I being nitpicky? Is it too much? What is the result of this thing playing incorrect speed and sound-wise? One of the commenters made a good point that so Galaga is one of these games that you want to play on one quarter for a long period of time, right? You want to be able to sure. get up to levels 30, 40, 50, 100, whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. However, playing this one at the slower clock speeds that it's apparently running at, it would take you longer to get to those same levels. Mm-hmm. So one thing that's going to set in that nobody's really talked about too much in the comments is physical fatigue, right? <laughs> if you're yeah. standing there, this game is mounted on your wall or hanging over a door as it's supposed to, you know, that's the form factor they built it for. Yeah, yeah, right. You're going to get less gameplay out of it because it takes you longer to get through the levels through no fault of your own, only simply the fact that each level populates slower. Even if it was just that then you go into the fact that it's two hundred dollars now uh, we yeah. all are at the point in our lives where we make decent money now and we're pretty capable of just splurging on something here and there oh that's fifty dollars i want to relieve a relive yeah. a piece of my childhood Once in a while sure yeah 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 i'll buy a replica gun from a video game yeah <laughs> <laughs> You want me to spend $200 and then A, physically it's not correct when it gets to me because like you said, you had the little piece on the control panel that was bowed up. You had the button Mm -hmm. that wasn't even connected. And then on top of that, it's three games and three games only. Okay, fine. I knew that going in, but they don't play properly. It's, Mm -mm. It's abhorrent that a company would get away with that. And what makes it worse is that there were people in the comments defending the company. Apologizing for them. No, not just apologizing. There's one commenter who was like really aggressive saying that you should just shut up. Your video is not relevant. It's not legitimate. And I'm like, (laughs) fuck you. All right. First of all, I play Galaga more than just about anybody you'll ever meet. I love, I play Galaga at least once a night. (laughs) I don't care if you think that we should let that. They're there to make a profit. Yeah. Yep. If and they're to there do to that, make a profit, they the better product. damn well put out a good product. Yeah. My opinion, honestly, I think that whole company should go bankrupt right now. <laughs> Fuck. Them. Wow. I'm done with Arcade One Up because they're not providing anything that A, we can't do for ourselves or B, they're not even providing it correctly. Wow. 
It's just ridiculous. What seems really obvious to me, though, is like the people who are running this company never play these games as a kid. No shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, it, I guess it's that like feeling. it's put together by people who never actually experienced it. And so they said, oh, yeah, it's close enough. And that's yeah, the impression that I get. Me off. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I'm going to go on the, I won't say the opposite of what you said, George, but in terms of I don't want them to go bankrupt. I actually like what they're trying to do. I do too, but they're fucking it up. So they're done. Give somebody <laughs> else a chance. <laughs> I get you. Yeah. So someone should do what they're doing. You're just upset at them you'd like them to burn in a ditch i get that <laughs> what i'm saying is i like the idea that yes there is a way to play galaga today the real galaga but it's not easy for the average person so to actually have a form factor that you could put in your home that people can get that feeling it's more than emulation as somebody said uh, in one of the comments about the fact that you know oh well, it's just just play the game on mame and i'm like we don't get it that emulates the game right but that doesn't emulate the experience of standing at the thing at the controls in front of the screen. So people want that and people sh that should be preserved. They're just not delivering and executing properly. That's the problem that I've got I with agree. it. And yeah. I put in a support ticket. I wrote them and I said, and they said, in description, I linked to three videos. There's my description. Oh. How are you going to fix it? <laughs> Have you I've not heard, heard back anything yet. back? Nothing back. <laughs> I've from heard it. nothing okay. back yet. So there's another knock against them then, right? I mean, because yeah. you're not the only person that I've seen talk about how horrible the support is with this company. Yep. So I, I think they're in over their head. I think they've got tons of success unexpectedly. They're growing fast and I don't think they can keep up and that's that's a bad combination with poor execution definitely but i bought it and i have it and i i'm, I'm gonna listen i want to make it better because i actually i think it looks gorgeous and i want to make it work better so we'll see how it goes but for now uh let's wait and see what the support I'll, says i'll send and, you a raspberry uh, pi and you can stick that in the back of it and you know i've been talking solved. actually <laughs> Stu Baca, one of our uh, one of our fourth listeners wrote me and said we can do this here's i know how to make a pie and do all that i'm mm -hmm. like let's see if they can make it right first but it could definitely be expanded upon for any vertical games with one button without even adding controls it, mm -hmm. so much potential so much potential yeah. all right i've rambled enough about the party cade god i feel like i've been talking about it for three weeks because <gasps> all the videos that i've done <laughs> yeah I've been. but mo <laughs> yeah you we started this segment by saying you had yet another tech yes, toy so we've gotten past ours let's get to you okay so like everybody else in the world you know my phone is integral in my life right oh yeah and of yep. course it's integral even in my car and so <laughs> I had a, a phone mount originally that was okay. But the thing that always bugged me is that, you know, I had to actually plug in my phone to charge it because it had okay. a USB connection. So it was, you know, again, it's a total first world problem kind of deal, right? <laughs> I've got to plug it in. I have infinite access to all the world's knowledge. And the thing, well, the thing that kind of bothered me is like I use Bluetooth to connect to my car. So I was like, I yeah. shouldn't need a wire. So um, I was looking for one of the a phone mount that had a QI charger built into it. Ah, that the, right. you know, had the wireless charging. And so yep. um, I found one, of course, through Amazon. Where else? That's right. That's where everything is. It's called the VicSeed. I think is the name of the company. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it's their wireless car charger with mounts. So, so right off the bat, it was $49. Ooh. So a bit pricey. But mm -hmm. let me tell you, it's pretty awesome. One is the quicker charge QI. So your phone actually yep. charges up fairly quickly on it. It even has a light to let you know that it's charging. And it, All right. the things that hold it in place are actually motorized, which I was a little iffy about because I'm like, great, something else to break, you know, as opposed to just a simple spring. But you just set your phone in it and it's, it, I guess it could tell that your phone is in it. And then the clamps just close on your phone. Oh, so it's not <laughs> magnet based then to hold it's it. It's not magnet based. And you can take your phone out with one hand. There's a little button on the top that you, when you grip your phone, you just push it and it releases your phone. So you pull your phone out with one hand. So you, you put your phone on this thing. Mm -hmm. These arms grab it and hold it and it starts charging right away. And it starts charging. Yep. So pretty, it was hmm. pretty cool. The thing I really liked about it is that it came with different mount options. So it has one for doing the vent mounting, you know, so yeah. you do, yeah, which is fins, pretty popular. Sure. Yeah, the fins. But then it had another attachment, which is the one I use, which you could actually connect it to your CD player because nobody uses those anymore. Oh, yeah. The kind that goes in the slot and then right. you expand it. Yeah. Oh, oh like it, it's a CD. Like it, it goes in that slot. Um, and yeah, it fits there. in that slot. And then you has has a little right. twisty yep. thing that kind of opens up a little clamp inside that holds it in place. Somewhere inside, you're mangling the internals of your yeah, CD who cares? player. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I've used it once and it holds it super secure in there like i have no fear of my phone falling out it does kind of cool that one also he said it has a little like a blue light that comes on and lets you know your phone is charging because you know sometimes with those wireless charging you're never really sure if your phone is charging because <laughs> some of them yep. are less yep. tolerant than others so it makes a noise so far it's worked absolutely perfectly i've had no problems with it 
I'm a little wary of the whole motorized clamping thing. Again, it just feels like something that's just going to break on me. Right. Is that going to wear out? Yeah, or exactly. Not? But, that's, but, that's my fear. But okay. I don't know. How did the weekend change? So far, so good. But I guess uh, we'll see in like another six months and see how it's doing. Right. And this is for iPhone, but since no, it's, no, wireless it's wireless charging, it does, it's, it's for anything. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't right. matter. So as long as you have wireless charging on your phone, yep. it works for you. Yep. It's phone All agnostic. Right. All right. So I assume from Amazon, you'll throw a link Absolutely. down in the show notes. So anybody interested can take a peek yeah. at the Vixseed wireless car charger. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks, Mo. Sure. Now stay tuned for the amazing Spider-Man and the Incredible Hulk. A bad guy poses as Spider-Man and goes on a crime spree, but can he fool the spider friends next? Tonight on Different Strokes, will Willis be voted prom queen? Then on Jennifer Slept Here, Jennifer says yes to an old flame, but will she say I do? Be there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's time for the Generation X game segment. And Ooh, I'm so going to applaud start you first. Be- <laughs> because I know you're not feeling yeah, well and you I'm still feeling- brought it. You brought it <laughs> for the right. games intro. <laughs> Good job. Oh, yeah. No, that I'm, I've am i got nothing left, so. George is going to sleep for the I'm rest of the show like now. He's spent. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> uh, but I do want to talk about a game that we've been playing. So, John, you have been fervent in making us get up out of our easy chairs and play yes, these Jackbox games in Discord. And we've been playing a lot of them with our patrons and a lot of our other YouTube fans and stuff. And it's been a lot of fun. And recently we just had a session where we had like six or seven people in there playing all at the same time. It was a lot of fun. Yep. I and love these sessions. One of the games that we played was called Mad Verse City. <laughs> I, it's, it's on my list of favorites. I So when you first described the game, when we were reading the little description of it in the Jackbox party games, I was like, this is going to be awful. There, there's no fun in this whatsoever. But the way they implemented <laughs> Implemented it, made it so much fun. It's essentially a rhyming game. You have to provide Bust a word. Rhyme. Yeah, <laughs> you provide a word based on a description that the game gives you. Then it asks, it provides you a whole sentence, and then it says, "Okay, now write a second sentence that rhymes with that first sentence somehow." And you're like, yep. uh, okay. <laughs> and then once you've done that, your sentences are put up against one of the other player's sentences. And then everybody else who wasn't one of those two people gets to vote on which person they think had the fun or best rhymes or craziest rhymes or whatever. Now, don't gloss over the fact robots. they're rapping robots. Exactly. I was rapping bring that up. Robots. <laughs> robots come out and rap your words. Come on. <laughs> I mean, there are a couple of people because it is a Jackbox game. So there's a couple of hosts in there that are making fun and jokes and stuff, which, you know, lends to the experience. But holy hell, I thought I was going to be <laughs> awful in this thing. And I actually won one of the games. And I noticed very quickly that the rhymes that got the most votes were usually the ones that forced somebody into like some pseudo sexual situation. <laughs> So <laughs> it's your own filthy mind writes the rhyme. Yeah. So whatever, it's, it's completely dependent upon the audience, whether that's going to play or not. But in our audience, oh, it's really totally played. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was curious, what did you guys think of it? I know I got a feeling that you guys enjoyed it considering how everything went that night, but <laughs> oh, no, I thought it was a blast. I'd never seen it before. I, I Well, I, I mean, I never played it before. I saw that it was in the pack, but it, you have to have a few people in the game to play in order for it to be interesting because you need audience members to vote and give you points and you need people to cheer and decide who wins. And I only ever thought, yeah, I looked at it, but I've been talking about it to, to people that I've, just like you're talking here, that like, have you seen this <laughs> robot rapping game? You've got to try this. It reminds me a little bit of Mad Libs, yeah. but with much yes. more free form. Yeah. Pick a word and it says, you know, do a noun or a body part or a uh, or an adjective or, or something. Or a negative adjective even, you know? Yeah, I got an adjective that describes a baby was one of the ones I got. And I'm like, what right. the hell? Okay, all right. Then they plug that in and you got to make the rest of the rhyme. And it's great. Yeah, I, no no debate here. Well, and I thought for <laughs> sure, given John's history, I thought for sure that John was going to win this game in a landslide because John, of Why? all of our friends, John is the guy who probably listens to more rap music than anyone I know. Okay. And he's super huge into the whole nerdcore rap scene, yeah, which is right. this times 10. 
right? Well, that doesn't make me a lyricist, though. <laughs> but I thought for sure. I was like, you know, he's got rhymes falling out of himself. And, and he was a yeah, music band guy. He's a guy. He could pull from, right? Like, I am not musical at all. I was like, surely John is going to wipe the floor with all of us. But you didn't nope. win a single one. I mean, you won, like, the little battles, but you didn't win the overall game one time. The overall and I games. Was like, yeah. I was surprised. I was like, really? Wow. Okay. So it's a game that the controller isn't screwed for me. I'm okay with it. <laughs> well, it's because it's the keyboard. Just type. So it's yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one that's going in the uh, regular rotation. <laughs> well, what about some other stuff that you've got in the regular rotation now? Is there anything new you're playing that you're actually oh, winning absolutely. at since you lost it? Yeah, one? yeah. Well, I don't know if I'm winning, but I'm playing. Yeah, a few episodes <laughs> ago, I was looking forward to a game from Studio Piccolo called Arise, mm. A Simple Story. If you're, if you're So as a refresher, this is the one where the game begins at your death. Right. You're an old oh, man who is on a, right. you're on a funeral pyre. They set you afire, and then it dissolves to you in a snow field and you're reliving and remembering your entire life like it's flashing before your eyes and uh, so I of course it came out I bought it and I have been playing it I've got a few hours into it it's one of the, another one of these games maybe not as huge as Gris that we talked mm-hmm, about a bit mm-hmm. ago but it's another one of these games as art and mm-hmm. I, I think there's not as far as I recall there's not a word spoken in it it's all just through the physical storytelling you know what you do and what you see there's a statue with a flower on it and that's meaningful but the mechanic is what I wanted to talk about because I did didn't know what the mechanic was when I first saw the trailer. It's actually a time bending mechanic in the game. Okay. So you are in this environment where maybe it's snowy, right? And so your left stick, as always on your controller, is navigating your guy. Mm-hmm. Your right stick changes the flow of time forward and back. And I guess it makes sense now to me in retrospect because you're reliving the life of someone in memory. So if you can't get to something, then you play time in reverse so the snow goes away and now the ground is clear and you can walk on it. Or maybe there's some water and you play time forward so the snow melts and the water rises and a platform changes. Oh, okay, okay. So you have this full time mechanic where you can change your environment with the right stick as you play in this kind of 3D platforming game, which is something I hadn't seen before. Hmm. No, we played other games that had that kind of time bending aspect to it where you push things forward. Right, or back. a little bit. Not like this, though. It seems like this is totally integral to it. Well, yeah, like Life is Strange. That was the whole point of the first Life is yeah, Strange. Yeah, of course. Was- Life is Strange. You could jump back to a different point, but that's like to repeat something. Right. And then we've like Braid is kind of, it had oh, some yeah. time elements in, in its puzzles, but this is like time in such a way that you it, it controls your environment. So rather than like rewind what this monster did or something, you adjust time to change the entire like seasons like it changes from winter to spring or to fall and you have power over that and so on top of what I was already looking forward to in this game which is the story which is cool which is the art style which is cool it actually has it's not just an average platformer it's got some cool mechanics in it that I haven't seen before so uh, I can't vouch for its long term quality as I mentioned I'm only about three hours into it but it added something that I wasn't expecting so So kudos to you Studio Piccolo yeah man so how much was this game I bought it new but it was only 20 bucks. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, will I play it 20 hours? Yeah, probably not. Uh, but it's one that I'm, I'm, it's in the back of my head. It's one of those, it's like an earworm song, like you're always humming it. <laughs> I haven't right. played it a ton, but I'm driving in the car and I'm like, oh man, remember that game where you could fast forward time? I need to go play some more of that. So it, it's ingrained itself. Uh, it, it's worth looking at. You should at least look at the video and see if it's for you. But so far, I'm not disappointed. There's a lot more left of it for me to explore. Cool mechanics. This is called Arise, A Simple Story. So uh, Mo, I'll give you a link if you want. You Absolutely. can throw it down in the show. Just like curiosity, yeah. if, you were, if you were to rate it today, how many tokens would you give it based on what you've seen so far? Uh, you know, right now, because I've only kind of dabbled in the first couple of levels, I'm going to give it three and a quarter tokens, right? So it didn't blow me out of my seat, but it's cool and has a lot of potential. I'm, I'm Keep in mind that is early preliminary review, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. High, good quality game. There's a lot there. I'm still getting into it. So three and a quarter for now. All right. Fair enough. Cobra's stolen our plans. He's escaping in the Viper Glider. Joe, catch him. It's the G.I. Joe Falcon Glider flying high in the sky. Sailing through the air, he's America's fighter. G.I. Joe can fly. G.I. Joe. He's a Joe. real American hero. G.I. Joe Falcon Glider and Cobra Viper Glider sold separately. Figures included from Hasbro. 
Before we wind up the show, you know, we always like to take a moment here toward the end to talk about what we're looking forward to mm. between now and the next time we get together to speak. And I'm going to start with you, Mo. What are you looking forward to? Oh, my God. This is something I have been looking forward to for over a year, actually. Okay. A show that I loved and got canceled, which was The Expanse. Oh, oh right. right. Yeah. Is now yeah. back. Actually. Who picked that up? Amazon. Amazon picked Amazon it up. Amazon picked right. it up. That's right. Yeah, they Amazon. They filmed the entire new fourth season, and I haven't watched it yet. It is already out. It just it launched yesterday, okay. which is to be the 13th. I am so looking forward to binge watching the entire freaking season. Part of me wants to binge watch it. <laughs> And part of me is like, oh, space it out. <laughs> Meet it out. You know, yeah. Enjoy it because it's going to be a while for the next season, I'm sure. But let me tell you, I know I, I know it's one of those things that I'm going to watch it. I'm just going to binge watch the whole damn thing. So I am totally looking forward to that. Both you and George spoke very highly of The Expanse. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. A, a couple of years ago when it was first out, I get before it got canceled. I heard Amazon picked it up, but I hadn't heard what they'd done with it. So oh, yeah. you have much more to look forward to. Wow. Yeah, yeah I'm totally <laughs> looking forward to that. How about you, John? What are you looking forward to? You know, I'm looking forward to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> wait a minute. That's already uh, out. Uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Wait, wait. The musical. What? What? <laughs> they have turned the Rankin Bass stop motion animation short into a stage production musical, uh, and I have a ticket. I'm going to see it. No, uh, are you kidding? serious? Are you kidding no, me? No, I love Rankin Bass. Don't get me wrong, but don't ruin my childhood. <laughs> by George, you're like the fifth person who I swore would be excited to hear about this who thought it was a dumb idea. I can't George, wait. Though. George, just so you know, I was one of the other people. <laughs> he, George, yeah. I was one of the other <laughs> so, people. <laughs> so I'm with you, man. <laughs> All right. So help adjust my excitement. Why do you think that not a good idea? Well, I mean, it's a money grab is what it feels like, right? It's Christmas time, of course. And they're taking something from our childhood because everybody knows that Gen X is in right now. And let's spend a whole bunch of money because all the Gen Xers are going to just throw their cash at it and everything. So let's put something out there that they can buy and quote, relive their childhood. But there's nothing better than sitting down in front of the TV <laughs> with some hot chocolate, maybe a little bit of popcorn or something, and watching that Rankin Bass show rather than go to a theater and watch some people sing it? Uh, no. Live theater. There's no substitute. Yeah, there is. <sighs> Stop motion. Yeah, the original. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And Mo, so why you also, I said, hey, it's coming to town. You want to see it? Nah, pass. Yeah, why, I, why was it not interesting you to know, you? Again, I, th I'm, I kind of with George on this one. It's like I have a specific memory of Rudolph red Nose Reindeer that I could read, I could go back to anytime I watch the show and I just don't want something that could ruin it. Like, say it's awful. Oh. Say it's awful. No, it could be very good. If it's yeah. excellent, great. But say, okay. say it's terrible. All right, all right. I'm going to go along with your mind experiment. Let's say it's bad. Yeah. All right. Then every time I watch the original Rudolph, all I'll be thinking about is this awful musical that I saw <laughs> related to it. Oh. But what if it's amazing it and be. you'll have missed it? Absolutely. Out. It could be amazing. To me, it's just not worth the risk. <laughs> it's a risk you're willing to run. Yes, okay. I will not take that <laughs> risk. To me, it's kind of like what Disney is doing right now with all these live action versions of their Lion original King cartoon and that films. Stuff, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Was the original, did it need to be updated and changed into a different milieu? No. It was awesome the, music's the way it was. exactly the same. I mean, they're the same yeah, movie. There's they no just... difference in them. <laughs> so I have tickets. I'm going to see it. I hope I could come back and rub it in your faces and tell you it was awesome. Awesome, or I can come back do, and tell you you're right. I'm not going to be okay. <laughs> you with don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you're just upset it exists. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Maybe I won't tell you about it. But wait, you know what? I guarantee we're going to talk about it again. You know why, oh, George? Sure. It's because of what you're looking forward to. Yes. I am looking forward to our Looking Back on Looking Forward podcast. We did it last year for the first time. We're I cannot do believe you're looking year. forward to yeah, this. You hate you it. You always year. bitch about this. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it because I worked so hard to have very few things on the list this year to make sure, oh, if I put this in looking forward to, I'm damn well talking about it. For the people who don't know, just I probably should explain that at the end of last year, oh, yeah. we did a looking back and looking forward. So stuff that we were looking forward to, but never talked about again, went to this one show. Right. Yeah. yeah. It all went to the dead letter. Yeah, exactly. So we're like, you know what? Rather than do a, a, everybody does a year in review podcast. Let's do our year in review and tie up all the loose ends of the stuff we said we're looking forward to. Let's find out how it turned out. So, yep. Yeah, I'm, I cannot I'm looking believe forward to that. you're looking forward to it. Really? I'm happy. Well, I'm just surprised. Only because, like I said, I tied up almost all my loose ends. I think I've got like three or four things on the list and that's about it. Yeah, you so worked like, hard this year. You specifically, I did a good job. I think you specifically went out and saw movies just so you would not have them on your list. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I absolutely believe that's true. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> that will definitely be a special edition sometime after the new year. Mm-hmm. And in a kind of a meta kind of way, I guess during it, we'll talk about this looking forward, which was yes, the recording of the show of looking that back. you're looking forward to. <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's, that's, like, that's, like, deep. that's like time travel, circular logic deal going on there. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the going to be an inception of looking moment. forward. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Right. How many layers <laughs> deep are we going here? <laughs> Sidewinder, the wheel twists behind her. It's the big new Sidewinder cycle. Your parents put it together. And Sidewinder's got the stunt shifter. Sidewinder. With sure grip steering, super sleek styling, and a stunt shifter that can spin you into excitement. Sidewinder. If there was anything in this show you'd like to learn more about, the show notes which accompany each episode are full of links to click and explore. Catch up on past episodes and get pinged every time a new one's released by subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. And you know, iTunes reviews help more than you know, so if you haven't yet, please rate and review us in the iTunes app. And if you have a friend who isn't yet listening, why not? Tell them about us, they'll thank you later. You're our fourth listener, and we'd love to read your emails right here on the show, so hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com. And finally, Gen X Grown Up is more than just this podcast. Our YouTube channel has hundreds of videos ready for you to enjoy, plus you can find our entire body of work on genxgrownup.com. That is just about going to wrap it up for this entry in the Gen X Grown Up podcast. Before we leave, you know I love to take a moment here at the end of the show to give a shout out and a huge thank you to all the people that support us financially over on Patreon. And it is an amazing growing list of people. These are folks that literally take a few bucks out of their pocket every month to help us keep the mm-hmm. lights on here. And I am talking about you. <sighs> Marcus Stubaka, T2, John Hun H, Will, Stu Monkey, Blasted or Stash it, Thomas, Mark, Chad, Dan, Dana, Stian, Mike, Art, Angel, <laughs> Angel, Keith, Levi, Mike C, Greg L, Greg Z, Corey, Slomo, Davis, and new, <gasps> since we last spoke, Adam Woo! has joined us wow. as a patron over Thank on you, Patreon. <laughs> Whew, man, I literally, no BS, literally ran so out of So now we have to get you an oxygen tank so you could like take some deep breaths before you do a second. Sure, time. yeah. Fine by me. If you would like to join this amazing roster of human beings, just head <laughs> over to <laughs> patreon.com slash Gen X Grown Up. Check out the levels. There's some bonus material for you, some uh, outtakes from these shows, whatever kind of stuff we can offer you. And at certain levels, there's some swag to be Ooh. had. So we hope you will join these folks in helping us support what we do here on the podcast over on YouTube and the website. Love you. Love you. Thanks for mm-hmm. doing that. We will be back in two weeks with a regular edition of the show, but next week with a backtrack where we pick a single nostalgic topic and dig in deep. Mo, would you please tell the fourth listeners what we're looking forward to oh. in the next backtrack? Absolutely. I mean, with the holiday season and when our next backtracks, I can drop the day after Christmas. Mm-hmm. We thought it was appropriate to have a show where we we're going to talk about our favorite toys that we got for Christmas growing up as a Gen Xer. Yeah. And man, we've made some lists. We have some Check cool some toys to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> George has some characteristic jobs things that we didn't have and we have some things that he might not have a baseball <laughs> how's that fun <laughs> you do not want to miss this and that'll be the next backtrack until then i am john george thank you for being here yes sir mo you know i appreciate you always fun man and fourth listener we appreciate you though most of all and we will talk to you next time bye bye see you guys take care everybody Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. We're also an affiliate of the Geeks Worldwide Radio Network. You can check them out at the GWW.com. Yeah, so Stu goes on to say, I'm still working my... Remember when I used to be able to use my face? <laughs> Uh, the good old days. I was the one who was sick. Mm, you, I, <laughs> no, we'll leave that one alone. Fizz, I'm mentally sick, though. It's <clears throat> okay. Well, for being sick, you're on your game, man. <laughs> you be sick more often. Right? <laughs> well, that's uh, Damn. so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you felt like shit all the time. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Novel Conversations, a podcast about the world's greatest stories. I'm your host, Frank Lavallo, and for each episode of Novel Conversations, I talk to two readers about one book, and together, we summarize the story for you. We introduce you to the characters, we tell you what happens to them, and we read from the book along the way. So if you love hearing a good story, you're in the right place. Our ninth season is coming this fall. Tune in to hear from some of the all-time great authors, Charles Dickens, Jules Verne, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and more. 
Subscribe to Novel Conversations wherever you listen to podcasts.